Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Um, let's talk about VAT. So what is this VAT thing? Firstly, VAT is value added tax. It's just an abbreviation for this tax type. Now, value added tax is a direct tax in the sense that it is levied on businesses, services and products, but it's ultimately paid for by the consumer, the end user, the general public like you and me. VAT is currently levied at 15% which is the standard VAT right? on the supply of all goods and services that is generated by a registered VAT vendor. There's a couple of exceptions to that rule, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Now, there's a couple of different categories for VAT vendors. So once you've satisfied the criteria and you've registered for VAT, you would fall in one of a couple of categories. The first category, category A, the majority of ad vendors fall into that category. It's your typical automatic default registration. That's category A. That's a two month return. So every two months, you will have to submit your VAT return to SARS with the, with the resulting payment with that. And the date on which you have to submit those for category A, is end of January, end of March, end of May, all the odd months, all the months that it, that have an odd month, an odd number associated with them. So generally six a year. Then category two, or as the source calls it, category B, is the same. Only the months end on the even numbers. So it's February, April, June, and so forth. Then you have category C which is a lot a lot of the larger corporates and the large listed entities fall in this now category c is when your turnover starts to exceed 30 million a year SARS would consider registering you for monthly vat returns and then you simply then just submit your vat returns on a monthly basis so category C if it happens that your turnover falls below the 30 million mark again you can apply for a change or an amendment from category C to A or B your choice but this have to be in written writing and if your turnover goes above 30 million again you will automatically be reclassified as a category C so then you also have category D now category D is a six monthly return period where the vendors who are registered in category D have to submit a VAT return every six months or semi-annually. Now, the majority of these cat, uh, vendors, VAT vendors that fall into in, in this category are typically micro businesses that have registered voluntarily and farms, agriculture. And this is a way SARS tries to help the agriculture, agricultural society also it's because of the, the way their businesses typically work then a category e is for it's kind of like an exception to the rule there are a few but there's certain criteria that have to apply for you to be able to be considered as a category e um as a category e person or a category e vendor and that's typically if your only trade is letting of fixed properties renting of immovable goods or if your company trades as the managing your, your trade activities is just manage, managing the letting of fixed properties or um, the renting of movable goods so that's the that's the category e essentially then category f was a different category that was involved but a couple of years ago new regulations came in and category f is no longer applicable that's the categories for VAT vendors. By the way, a VAT vendor is simply a company, an individual or a business that's registered for VAT. I'll explain a bit more about who and where and why they need to register for VAT, but later on in this video for now, let's talk about the different kinds of VAT. Yes, there's different kinds of VAT. Primarily there's two. 
there's a vat output and there's a vat input. Now, don't get confused between the two. A vat output goes with income and vat input goes with expenses. So, I always thought of it as you've got money coming in, so you've got VAT going out. And if you've got money going out, expenses, you've got VAT coming in from sales. So that, that's the way I always just try and make it for myself. Also, considering output goes with expenses, it's kind of like the opposite. Out with expense, uh, output with incomes and input with expenses. Under output rate or under output, VAT output, you kind of have three categories of items. The first kind of items or, or the first kind of VAT output is, is levied at the standard rate. Now, since March of this year, that standard rate has been 15%. Previously, it was 14 How do you know whether a product or a service or an activity has VAT at 15%? Simply, when in doubt, it's likely got VAT at 15%. Um, these include your standard construction, your standard land and buildings, your standard consumables, um, the camera, these glasses, my cell phone, my clothing, most of these books, all of that has 15% VAT on it. Well, that 14 at the time when I purchased them, but currently 15. Professional services, such as accounting services, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, also carry VAT at 15%, but as so would agriculture, or not agriculture, um, architectural attorney's fees, lawyer's fees, um, doctor's fees. So all of these other services carry VAT at 15%. There's also municipal utilities like electricity and water, um, general entertainment, which is YouTube services, a public speaker, a musician, a band, actors. Uh, if you buy a TV series, there's VAT on that. That kind of thing. Entertainment also carries VAT at 15%. And I can go on. Then we have zero rated items. Now for zero rated items, I will likely list them over here. I'll also add a list of the zero rated items in the description of this video. But the zero rated items means that, what zero rated means is that when you buy an item that has VAT on it, and it falls under the zero rated classification, the amount of VAT will be charged at 0% whereas the standard rate items are charged at 15%. So there's VAT on it, but the amount of VAT is zero. Now these items are typically your bread and your cake flour, your brown bread specifically, sanitary pads, which is three items that came through in the mini budget speech a while back, uh, chicken eggs, your maize meal, samp, a couple of other, the majority of your fresh fruit and vegetables and foodstuffs carry VAT at zero rate. Um, as well as most fuel. And if an item is regulated by the Petroleum Act, um, carries petrol levy kind of thing, it's regulated by those levies. If the fuel price is regulated, such as um, petroleum and diesel and illuminating kerosene specifically, uh, which is basically just illuminating paraffin, um, those items carry that at zero rate. So it's mostly foodstuffs, general fresh foodstuffs, and fuel, but there are some exceptions to this rule. If, for example, you buy a salad that's served to you on an airplane, the salad is pre-packed and ready for consumption. It's packed as ready for consumption, which means that there will have to be VAT on that. That's one of the exceptions to that rule, and there's a couple of others apply, or a couple of other exceptions that also apply. So. What are the exempted sections or the exempted items? So here's a couple of examples. First off, financial services. You do not pay VAT on the insurance premium. You do not pay VAT on interest, for example. Um, you don't pay VAT on donations. Donations received and donations given don't carry VAT. Also, there's residential accommodation in a dwelling. There's some specific VAT aspects regarding that. Uh, passenger transport in a taxi, bus, or train. So the taxi industry don't pay VAT at all. Um, well, for passenger transport. And educational services. Again, Pretoria Accounting Services YouTube channel can be considered educational. But schooling, 
um, university de degrees, formal studies, as well as educational service providers, such as artisan training colleges and that kind of thing, don't have that on those services. And there's a couple of other items. Interestingly enough, that when you have a zero rated item, you don't pay that if, let's say I'm a vendor and I produce an educational service. Well, not, not an educational service. Bad, idea, bad example, but let's say I present or I manufacture diesel. So diesel has that at zero rate, but in the manufacturing of diesel, I would have to rent certain properties. I would have to buy certain equipment. I would have to buy certain materials. I would have to um, pay water and electricity, all of those other items that have VAT on them. And I don't charge VAT because the VAT on my case is zero rated. In such a case, you will get a VAT benefit in that sense, whereas the physical amount of VAT that you receive will be zero, but you can claim the VAT input on those items. So just a bit of interesting way of, of a company that has a zero rated product or service can, that can generally uh, benefit from that. It's not very often, but it does happen. So what is input? Input, that input is essentially what you pay over to SARS or what you can claim back from source output is what you pay to source. And if that was charged on an item that you paid on an invoice that you had to pay, then if you're registered for that, you can claim that back from source. Provided that three conditions apply. It must be bought by the vendor during the course of their normal business. Meaning it must be something that the company or the vendor bought during their normal business. Secondly, there must be VAT on the item. You cannot claim VAT if there wasn't VAT on the item. Um, and then thirdly, the proper documentation must be kept. Now, SARS has a couple of criteria for what a proper documentation is. If you have questions regarding that, get in touch with us. We will gladly assist you with the details of what has, what's the proper documentation that you have to have, what's the difference between a pro forma invoice and a VAT invoice. It gets technical but the proper documentation should happen. So if those three criteria are, com are complied with, or yeah, those three criteria are met, then you can claim the VAT. Oh, and you have to be a registered VAT vendor. So who should register for VAT? Any individual, or the, the law basically says any person, but a person includes a natural person such as myself, or a company, or a trust, or a CC, it doesn't differentiate between the type of person. They just include, they just say a person and the legislation considers a legal, a juristic person or a natural person. So it can be any one of those two entities. Um, if they have taxable supplies, um, meaning they provide a product or a service in which you can either charge that at 15% or at zero rated, um, then such a person person may register provided that they have levied at least 50,000 rands worth of services. In other words, their invoices have been at least 50,000 rand for the year. Or then they can register voluntarily. Um, and this has to be a consecutive 12 month period. Or you have to register, you, you are compiled. Not compiled. It is compulsory for you to register once your taxable supplies exceed 1 million Rand in any consecutive 12 month period. Now, so says you should register for that when you become aware that you are likely to exceed 1 million Rand in a 12 month period. Now, this often happens about a month or so before you realize, oh wait, it's a 12 month period and I'm getting at 990,000 Rand's worth of turnover then people realize, oh, okay, we should probably start registering. In other cases, people aren't always aware and they only register once they've got at, once they've met a million. Other cases, as with the client that I'm currently working with, they have just met the 50,000 Rand registration. They expect to exceed a million throughout a 
the next year or so. So they want to register compulsory now. Not necessarily easy, but it can happen. So those are those who have to register for VAT. If you have registered for VAT in the past and you no longer comply with VAT registration, it is possible to deregister for VAT. However, any and all VAT refunds that you had to that you had received may be jeopardized in that. So this is Pretier Accounting Services. This video was all about that. Um, next week's video is going to be slightly different. Um, be talking about. I had an interview with someone a while back who is a new business owner. I will link his information in that video's description. But all in all, next week's video is going to be this introduction to this company who is a software company. They do software development and their business, the, the interview was more about the struggles and how they run their business, where they're from, who they are and what their business is about. So having said that, keep an eye out for next week's video. This is Pretier Accounting Services. I hope you have a great weekend.